Greetings this Thursday morning. It is um, a beautiful day here in Fairport, New York. My name is Ken Pepin. I'm the rector here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church. Delighted to pray with you this morning. Uh, we'll start off with our usual openings. <clears throat> Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain, sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This morning, our... Um, Psalm is a portion of Psalm 37. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the grass they'll fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord, and he shall give your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him and he will bring it to pass. He will take your righteousness as clear as the light and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone and do not fret yourself. It leads only to evil for evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord laughs at the wicked because he sees their day will come. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to strike down the poor and needy, to slaughter those who are upright in their ways. The sword shall go through their own heart and their bow shall be broken. The little that righteous has is better than great riches of the wicked, for the power of the wicked shall be broken. But the Lord upholds the righteous. <clears throat> Our um, scripture this morning will um, continue our, our um, reading in the uh, second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, uh, beginning chapter 3. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Surely we do not need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you, do we? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter of Christ prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of the human heart. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are competent of ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. Our confidence is from God, who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of a letter, but of spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Now, if the ministry of death, chiseled in letters on stone tablets, came in glory so that the people of Israel could not gaze at Moses' face because of the glory of his face, the glory now set aside, how much more will the ministry of the Spirit come in glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, much more does the ministry of justification abound in glory. Indeed, what once had a glory had lost its glory because of the greater glory. For if what was set aside came through glory, 
much more has the permanent come in glory. Since then we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside, but their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that some veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now that's quite the motivating spirit, isn't it, huh? <laughs> that would read really well at a graduation or a commencement event, huh? I think it's uh, the beauty of that, is that something that real, that powerful, um, has occurred in the presence of Jesus. Um, that a whole tradition has been transformed. A whole tradition has been renewed, has been... Uh, the image that stays with me is the, the beautiful image of uh, Paul relaying that the, there's no need to write a letter of recommendation, <laughs> that the recommendations are alive and walking in our midst, that we are the recommendations to God for one another, that we are, um, that the Spirit of God again dwells with us and within us. And we can open ourselves and appreciate that reality this day. Um, as we move towards this uh, Memorial Day weekend, we uh, call ourselves to, to be still, to listen, to uh, realize the Spirit of God that dwells within us. And how might that be activated? How might that be engaged uh, throughout, the, throughout the week? So let us pray for one another as we are walking letters of reference <laughs> for each other. We uh, can open ourselves in prayer and trust in God. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for all those people who have led us in faith. For all who uh, continue to encourage us and strengthen us. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, for the well-being of all people. We pray for justice and for peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. We pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find God and be found by him. I ask your prayers for those who have died. We bring to prayer as well all those people who have asked us to pray for them. Asked us to to be again their reverence, um, to extend our love to them, to include them in our conversations with God. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. This is another day, O Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready for whatever it might be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. Make these words more than words and give me the spirit of Jesus. May God bless us this day with an appreciation of the spirit that dwells within us. Help us and remind us that we are the, often the voice, often the presence, often the, um, the very love of God to those in need. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Have a great week and weekend, and we'll see you on Monday.